Hello everyone, this is Eric Smith from CapSim, and today I'm going to walk you through how to do a sales forecast in the global DNA simulation. Uh, now before I begin, um, I should note that this video assumes that you have already read the manager's guide, uh, which is available under Sim Resources or from this help and support area, um, along with completing uh, the training uh, called the Executive Development Program, or EDP. Now, without further ado, uh, I'm going to go to the company homepage and get us logged in. Uh, so we are looking at the first practice round, and before we get to marketing, where we would do our sales forecast, uh, the first department that we should work on is research and development. Now, in the essence of time, I'm simply going to input uh, some numbers here where we're going to make our product a little slower, a little less accurate, and we're going to lower the service life. Now, <clears throat> what you input in R&D uh, should definitely depend on the strategy that you're trying to employ, right? If I was trying to be... Uh, more of a high-tech uh, provider, I would have moved my product up and to the right, closer to that ideal spot in the performance market. Uh, in the budget market, the ideal spot is closer to the middle of the circle. So this revision that I've done makes it a little bit closer to the ideal spot in budget, which would be kind of right in the middle of that circle, closer to the bottom left. Uh, and, you know, what I've done is I've kept the product within both markets. So uh, as time goes on, this would get progressively more difficult for me to do as this overlap area uh, will eventually disappear. So it's going to shrink a little bit each year. And if I go back to the beginning, you can kind of see how much overlap there is in round zero versus how much there's going to be at the end of year two. It's already noticeably uh, less of an area. So at the end of year one, um, our product would be in both markets. And the advantage of being in both markets is that I could sell my product to both customer group. Uh, now, you know, I chose these coordinates because when we're doing a sales forecast, we need to think about where we are selling our product. And by selling it in both segments, this will give you a, a more complex example uh, that you can reference back to than if we were just selling our product to one of these groups of customers. Okay. Uh, now, I should point out that at the bottom of this page, you can see what customers expect this year, uh, what perfect would be for the budget consumers or in the performance market. Uh, you know, our, our specs are not perfect for either group right now, uh, but at the same time, uh, by being in the overlap, it means we're eligible to sell to both groups. So there's, there's pros and cons. Uh, to whatever you do <clears throat> with your product in R&D. Uh, the last change I made to lower that service life down from 21 to 20,000, the logic here was that the range for budget tops out at 20,000, and in the performance market, it's 17 to 23. So 20,000 would still be okay for this group. Technically, anything at or above 17,000 would be okay for performance. Uh, but being above 20,000 actually made our product a little more expensive to build than it needed to be. Uh, and you can see that our new material cost is actually a little cheaper than where we started based on that revision we made. Looks like it's about 50 cents less. Okay, uh, so let's get to marketing where we're actually going to focus on the sales forecast. Uh, so when we look at marketing, uh, we're looking at the Americas uh, initially, but we can easily toggle over to Europe and Asia Pacific. Uh, you've probably noticed that we're not currently selling our product in either of these regions. 
but if we want to be a global company uh, and we want to sell our product in those markets, we simply change this no to yes and those cells will open up, okay? Uh, but let's start with the Americas since we were doing business here last year, uh, as we can see in our globe report. Uh, now, I like to open up the globe in another tab that way, and if you just right click it, you can open it up in a new tab. Uh, that way I can kind of click back and forth between the report and the simulation. Uh, but, you know, technically you could do a sales forecast without even leaving the screen. Uh, everything you need to do a sales forecast is at the bottom of this page. I mean, we can see the customer buying criteria, just like we could see in R&D. Uh, we also have forecasting tools here, which tells us uh, how many customers there were in round zero uh, last year, 2017, um, and the growth rate for this year. So we can easily calculate the demand for this round, 2018, uh, and we can also see what influences the customer's decision in terms of which product they're going to buy. Okay, so for starters, uh, we need to figure out what we're going to do with our price. And uh, when we took over the company, it was priced at $31. Uh, and looking at the globe, we can see that we did, in fact, make a profit when we had that price at $31. Uh, so we could leave it, uh, but I would like to put a little more thought into this. Um, how much flexibility do we have with our price? Well, the first thing we need to know is how much does it cost us to build the product? And if we look at our production department, that's going to be right here on the right hand side where it tells us our cost per unit. Uh, so this is what it costs us to build product ABLE. Uh, it's currently $20.65. So when we're deciding what to make our price, um, we know that it needs to be more than $20.65, uh, but we also don't want to go above $34.50. And that $34.50 was the top of the price range in the Americas, in Europe, and Asia Pacific, although you should note uh, the different currency in each region. Uh, we have US dollars, euros, and Singapore dollars being used. Um, so we're keeping it simple with the Americas. Right now we're at 31. There is no exchange rate because we're based out of the Americas. Um, <clears throat> let's say we lower our price to 30, okay? Um, is this an okay change? Well, uh, one rule that I'd recommend you try to follow is we want our contribution margin to be at least 30%. And if we look at that production page, it'll tell us our margin at the price we've currently input. So at $30, our margin is at about 31%. That's pretty good. Uh, and by lowering the price, we can also see that... Um, customers would like that, right? At least in the budget market, they're really price sensitive. So if we can give them a lower price, that should mean that we, we get more sales, right? Uh, in the performance market, they don't care so much about price. Uh, they want cutting edge. They want the product to be brand new. Uh, they expect more reliability. And if you're giving them that that product that they really want, they're willing to pay you top dollar for it. So uh, remember, what we did in R&D is going to influence uh, the price that we put in. If we had made our product more of a performance product, we might go closer to that 4450. But because we want to sell our product in both markets, we probably don't want to go above 3450. Otherwise, we won't sell very much. Uh, to that budget group of consumers. I hope that makes sense. Um, okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so we even put a price of 30 and our margin looks okay in the Americas. Uh, so next thing we want to look at is promotion and sales. This will determine the awareness of our product and the accessibility. Uh, now there are regional and product uh, marketing 
investments that we can make. Regional is off on the left-hand side here. And what we're doing for product able is located right here underneath product able. Now, I hope you've read the manager's guide and you know that if we only have one product, the regional marketing is not as effective as our product marketing. So I'm going to get rid of some of that regional marketing and shift some of that money over here to the product. Now, if we did regional marketing, it would help every product that we were selling in the Americas. So if part of my strategy would have been to, let's say, introduce a couple new products in R&D, which we could do gradually or we could do uh, all at once if we could afford it. Um, if we had more products, then we may be putting all of our money onto regional instead of onto the product. But when we only have this one product, uh, we're getting a little more bang for our buck uh, by putting our marketing over here. And I should have noted, uh, we started off at about 58% and 38 for awareness and accessibility. Um, our awareness has improved, our accessibility has improved, and our price is more appealing at 30 than it was at 31. So customers would like all of these changes that we've made thus far. So what are we going to project as our worst case and best case forecast? Well, we could look at, um, we could look at what we sold uh, last year. Um, if we go to our globe report and we scroll down, we'll see that last year we sold about 1,500 units total, and that was just in the Americas. Um, <clears throat> if we take a closer look, we'll see exactly how much we sold to the budget market, how much we sold in performance. And remember, we only made sales in the Americas in year one. Moving forward, we might pick up sales in Europe and Asia, Asia Pacific, depending on what sort of decisions we make. So <clears throat> let's focus on the Americas for now. Um, Again, I'm using the GLOBE report. Um, this information is also down here in the bottom right of your marketing page where you can see the market size and you can see the growth rate. So uh, let's try to do this without leaving the page. We'll, we'll leave the GLOBE out of this for simplicity's sake. Um, last year's demand was 58.38 and the growth was 6%. So if I take 58.38 and I multiply by one plus that 6% growth rate, it tells me that this year there's 6,188 customers. Now, there's six companies in the SIM. Uh, just a friendly reminder, uh, we can see the six companies on page one in our report. Uh, a conservative estimate since we think our price is better, since we know that our awareness and accessibility has improved, since we know that we made the positioning a little better for this group of customers, uh, all of those things should be well received. I would say a, a conservative estimate would be about average. Let's say we just divide by six. Uh, so we take the total number of customers and we're dividing by the number of companies. That comes out to about 1,031 units. Now, again, that's pretty conservative. Um, we think that customers are, are really going to like those changes we made. So in reality, we'll probably outperform this 1031. But the first thing we want to do is we want to come up with our worst case scenario. Uh, Assuming that everybody made these sorts of changes or uh, perhaps even better than what we did, uh, it, it seems like average would be pretty conservative in our example. Um, you know, forecasting, it's not an exact science, but uh, what we want to remember is that our worst case is <clears throat> going to drive um, 
our finance page, meaning when we look at how much cash we're expecting to have at the end of the year, it's based on this worst case. So uh, we don't want to assume that we have more money than we have. Uh, that's why we want to be conservative with this worst case projection. And when we produce our best case, uh, this will <clears throat> trickle over to that production department when we're uh, deciding how much to build for each product. Okay. Um, so worst case, we figured about a thousand units in budget. Uh, what about performance? You know, if I look at the forecasting tools, I can click over here to performance. Last year, there were 3,195 in terms of customers, and the growth rate was 13%. Now, I think um, the changes we made would not have been uh, as well received in the performance market. Uh, they like cutting edge, and we made our product uh, slower and less accurate. Uh, I'm going to toggle over to the performance criteria here so you can see this. But we made our product slower and less accurate, so the number one criteria, our product got worse. Uh, age. We made the age better. When we revised our product, uh, it cut the age in half on the revision date service life we went from 21,000 to 20,000 i'd say that's worse um, what about the price uh, the price is a little better but they don't really care right it's only 10 percent of their buying criteria so positioning's worse service life is worse age got a little bit better um, i'd say overall we're probably going to do below average in that performance market with product able so we took uh, this year's demand, 3610. If we divide this by six, the number of companies, it's going to come out to about 600, uh, which again is probably too high. It's probably too optimistic based on those changes we made. Uh, so what's a more conservative number? Um, let's go with maybe 450. Uh, maybe best case, we'll sell about 500 of this product. But in the budget market, we're thinking we'll sell about a thousand, and in performance, we'll sell about 450. So if I add these two together, it comes out to about 1481 or about 1500 units. Uh, <clears throat> this is basically what we sold last year. Uh, so we'll, we'll go with the 1481 since that's what we calculated. Uh, <clears throat> what about our best case? Well, uh, same sort of of thought process, but this time we're going to be a little more optimistic. Um, maybe in that budget market, so we had 1481 uh, in our worst case. So 6,188, that's the number of customers. Um, you know, one sixth is like 16 to 17%. Let's say our market share is more like 20%. How many units would we sell to that budget market? Uh, it would come out to about 1,200, uh, 1,237. And in the performance market, 450 might have been overly conservative. Let's say we sell 500 to those customers. Uh, so we got 1,737 in our best case. <clears throat> Now, after we've hit recalculate, we can see that our product is not in the red. It's in the blue, which means it's making a profit. And it's almost 10 million uh, in the positive, which is fantastic. Um, if we continued forward making decisions for the Americas, at this point, we'd go to production and we'd make sure that we were building enough to sell that best case. Uh, I'll, I'll do this real quick just so you get the idea. Uh, but right now we have 79 in inventory. Um, we're producing 1600 and it looks like there's a shortfall of 74 units. So let's try 1674, see if we can get rid of the shortfall. There's a little bit of an adjustment. So we're going to do 1675. And 
the shortfall overage, we always want that to say zero. That means what we've built or what we've outsourced uh, plus our inventory equals our best case. So to sell that best case, that 1737, we built exactly what we needed to for there to be nothing extra and nothing short of that number. I hope that makes sense. Uh, but <clears throat> I want to get back to marketing so we can really finish uh, forecasting. Uh, there's a good chance that after looking over uh, the GLOBE report, you're going to want to go into Europe and Asia Pacific. There's customers there, and they currently have no one supplying uh, what they're looking for. So uh, just for reference, if I go down to page 10 and look at Europe, so we got page 10 in our GLOBE report. If I look at Europe, you know, there was 1,900 customers last year, almost 2,000, and nobody sold anything because nothing was sent over to Europe. So let's say we want to we want to make an impact. We want some market share in Europe. To sell in Europe, we just click from no to yes, and when we input our price, let's see, what did we do for the Americas? We did 30. Um, let's say we put in 30 for our price. First thing to make note of is that the local price is only $28.50. The local price is what our product would actually be selling at. Um, and the reason these are different is because there's an exchange rate that you need to keep in mind. Okay, There's also tariffs and there's a shipping cost when we're selling in Europe. So, uh, you know, to get this up to $30, we probably need to do like... I think it's 3158, which it is. Okay, so uh, at 3158 US, we'd be charging 30 euros uh, based on this year's exchange rate. Now, this is going to change over time. It's we tell you the first couple years in that market conditions report, which I hope you take the time to review. Uh, but the logic here is if I'm priced at 30 euros um, and, you know, last year I know there was nobody selling in Europe, I mean, our best case would be we sell to everybody, right? Uh, we, we make every sale. Um, more realistically, we're going to have some competition. So I would say our worst case uh, would be step one, we got to figure out the demand, just like we did in the Americas. You'll notice now this is on Europe. Uh, we take our 1994, that was last year's demand, factor in the growth, that 18%, and we got 2,352 customers. Uh, let's say we divide this by six. Let's pretend everybody goes to Europe. Uh, this seems like it would be a good worst case where we are average uh, and everybody went to Europe, right? So if if we go with 400 for our worst case, that seems pretty conservative. Um, now, I should note that as time goes on, it will get easier to forecast. When I get to round two, I could actually look and see how many competitors went to Europe. If it was only three teams, um, then I'd be expecting to sell double of this number. Uh, but without knowing how much competition we'll have, uh, it's better to be conservative and expect um, about an average market share for six companies than to assume that we won't have any competition and uh, maybe we overproduce and uh, build up a bunch of inventory. If that happens, we could really easily go bankrupt if we're stockpiling inventory that's not getting sold. And, oh, by the way, it's costing us $3 a unit to ship it there. Uh, that's a really easy way to uh, go from being in the black or in the blue uh, to the red, right? So worst case, 400. Uh, best case, I'd say, is about an extra two months worth of sales. Uh, 400, yeah, it's like 35 units a month. Let's just let's just call it um, let's just call it 500, just to keep this easy. 
so in Europe, our worst case is 400 and our best case is 500. Let's say that we're not going into Asia Pacific at this time, so we're just going to leave these alone. Uh, but we hit recalculate, it gave us our updated projection, and uh, we're going to go to the production page. And the last thing I want to show you is we need to toggle over to Europe to uh, actually produce and sell anything in Europe. So this is a really common mistake where students will project that they're going to make sales in a particular region, and then they'll forget to send anything over there. So uh, looking at Europe, we know that we need to build 500. But if I look at my remaining capacity, I've only got 325 units that we can build on our own. Uh, that's going to use up all of our first shift. Now, as a company, we could decide to expand the capacity or we could increase our automation. Um, both of those things are talked about at length in the manager's guide, so I'll leave that out of this video. Uh, but once we've used up all our capacity, we need to outsource in order to fulfill our demand. Uh, so we need 178 more units. I'm going to plug in that 178. Uh, and you'll see that our margin is only 24.5%. Uh, in the Americas, it was over 30. So you can see the impact of uh, that shipping cost, of the tariffs that we'll be paying. Uh, they have different tax rates, the US and Europe, or Americas and Europe. Uh, it's actually a little cheaper as far as a tax rate when you go to Europe. Um, but Ultimately, we want this contribution margin to be above 24%. We want it above 30. Uh, so how would we do that? Go back to marketing. We take a look at our price. We know that the top of the range is 34.5 euros. We're currently at 30. So <clears throat> why don't we try increasing the price up to 36 US? That'd be about 34, excuse me, that'd be about 34, um, 34 euros. And <clears throat> if I go back to production, my margin is now 33%, which is much better. Uh, this product is uh, probably making a lot more money in this scenario. Uh, now, what's the one thing we overlooked? Well, if we're charging more money, uh, our worst case and our best case should probably be a little less, right? Customers aren't going to like us as much uh, if we're charging them more for every sale. So I'm going to bring this down by 75. Um, again, it's a bit of a guessing game in round one. Uh, but as time goes on, we'll be able to come up with a better forecast when we can look and see how many companies are doing business in each of these regions. So I've, I've lowered our worst and best case. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is go to production. We go back to Europe. Right now, we're building too many. We've got 75 too much. Uh, that's this overage. Uh, so I'm going to outsource a little bit less. We're going to bring it down to 103. We've gotten rid of that shortfall overage. And at this point, I would go to finance, take a look at our cash position. Uh, it looks like we still have money, so I might save it as is. Uh, but we also didn't uh, we didn't make any plant improvements. We didn't start any new products. Um, there's a lot more we could have done in this video. Uh, so remember, these decisions are far from perfect. Uh, but I do hope this video was helpful uh, as far as um, the kind of thought process you need to have when you're working out. Um, you know, should we adjust this number up or down? And what sort of basic information do I need to look at uh, to come up with an estimate? You know, we need to remember that we're selling the product in both markets, at least in this example. Uh, we need to factor in the growth rate from last year's demand. And finally, we need to estimate our market share. Uh, if we don't have a ton of information to work with, a pretty decent method is just to divide by the number of companies, which in this case is six. Okay. 
Um, again, if you guys have any questions, you can always feel free to call support at capsim.com. Uh, I'm sorry, you can email support at capsim.com. You can also call support. Uh, the number's at the bottom of the web page. But when you're finished making decisions, be sure you click save. Save whatever department you were working on. And uh, if you've worked on everything, just make sure you save for all. Okay. I hope this was helpful, and uh, have a good one, everyone.